Welcome back to Aptera. Thanks, Chris, for uh, agreeing to meet up with us and show us around some of the first production parts. What do we got? What you got it's here? been an amazing journey the last you know nine months or so as we start to commission all the big tools in Italy. But CPC has done an amazing job taking these huge hunks of steel from Germany, milling them down into match set dies, and now producing our first composite carbon fiber SMC parts. We had the first bodies put together actually last year, but now we finally have one here. So you can come and Sweet. see all the splendor yes. that is carbon fiber <laughs> SMC. But so I figured I would tease you and uh, you. show you the rear hatch first. Wow, can I touch it? Yeah, yeah. This beautiful piece here oh, is wow. pretty lightweight. The Come SMC close. process gives you like super defined features and wow. you know, this plastic bucket will house oh the rear gosh. camera for your, for your rear That's view camera really system. That's really rigid. Yep. That is so cool. All those little grooves. Yeah, it yeah. looks sexy okay. too because you can see the carbon in it. You can see it reflecting in the light there. But yeah, yeah. You, know, you can see the actual carbon as it flows through the part. Man, that's beautiful. But you can get ribs. You can get little features like this. This is this is what we bond the solar panel on the top of this oh, okay. with. The bonding agent will go around here. So if you wanted wow. to replace the solar panel on here, you'd cut it off just like you'd cut off a windshield oh, wow. uh, on the front of your car and then just bond a new one on. Likely, wow. we would probably just send you a new rear hatch if you wanted to. Yeah. New. But yeah, cool, you can cool. see. Yeah, yeah, kind of super defined features oh, on the yeah. back. Oh yeah, seal ribs. It. That's where the seal goes, so it just wow. presses in there, and that's what seals on the back. What would you say? Maybe yeah. six kilograms, maybe. A kilo. Maybe. What's that in America? <laughs> Two point two. So yeah, that's not fifteen bad pounds, at all. maybe. Does not feel like I'm not a strong guy, and that doesn't seem like a piece of a car I'd normally be able to just lift. This cool <laughs> pattern mimics the solar, and it, it gives you lots of rigidity. Yeah. When the guys in Italy designed it first, they just wow. put uh, kind of stiffening lines. Uh -huh. like, that looks kind of boring. Jason and the design team came up with a really cool pattern here. This is the plan coming together. Yeah, it is. How long does it take for this piece to be? The smaller the piece, out? the quicker the stamping. So right. the real small pieces are like four minutes. Wow. Now this is probably more like six minutes and the big pieces are like eight bad. to 12 minutes because okay. you have to, uh, the material has to heat up. So you, you keep the material hot, then you transfer the material into the die. Gotcha. It cools down a little. Press the, the dies together and obviously the metal's heated. As it presses and squeezes that out, it takes some time to flow so the big parts like the tub that takes the longest sure the upper a pillar stuff that's super quick but a lot less time than having to assemble hundreds of little pieces which is what you're replacing. yeah yeah the, re <laughs> the replacement is stamping out a bunch of steel or aluminum parts sure and then you have a sure. couple hundreds even in a rear deck lid like this would probably be in steel maybe 16 parts or so but you try to really limit them and you can't draw the part too much you can only stretch metal so much at a time right right so they have progressive dies for like uh, quarter panels and stuff on cars it like an inch and then you do another inch and then you do another inch so some parts like take five or six dies wow in steel or aluminum because mm -hmm. you have to you have to deform it really slowly this is one one step anything you want any curvature you want <laughs> any depth you want and it's pretty um, big i keep forgetting how big it is until <clears> it's <throat> person. that's a that's gonna be a lot of storage underneath there then we got our uh, bonded composite doors oh, wow. so the really cool thing about this and sandy monroe would tell you is most steel or aluminum doors you have to put a door card in and it's a plastic carrier that carries your roll down mechanism and all that stuff. Okay. That's how they sped it up in traditional automotive, but with carbon fiber SMC, we can form all of those features, wow. facets. So th <laughs> this is the lightest door. Oh my God. You're ever gonna feel. <laughs> That's weird. And that's with the fiberglass. So the fiberglass is heavier and it's like 60% thicker. Because the carbon fiber is so rigid, you can make the parts a lot thinner. Not that you're ever going to be lifting it because it's, yeah. does it spring open? It does. Is it, yeah, there's a strut that attaches okay. right there and pushes it up. Because I saw on your app, there's like a button for opening both doors. Yeah. Not just the driver's side. So when you push that button from the app, does it... Yeah. That's so cool. How much weight does the uh, window and glass add? You'll probably double the weight by the time you have the mech and the glass in here. The glass gotcha. is pretty heavy. It's okay. a six millimeter glass tempered. But you can see you've got the you know the bonding features. It's a little checkerboard pattern that yeah, just gives yeah. you a piece of a little more grip. Perfect. But that's where your top window will be buttoned in. And then your seal goes on here and the window just rolls up into the trough wow. here. And very Beautiful. aerodynamic. We're able to streamline the, the rear edge really nicely. So. Yeah. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey. <laughs> just showing me around all your guys' hard work. Oh, you finally got to see. It, yes. You must be proud. Super proud. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's only been here a couple of days. Those were already formed in the piece for the screws yeah so the bonding and jigging really mm -hmm. is like putting together a, a big lego set yeah you know <laughs> things just snap together and in the future we'll have robots that uh that spread the adhesive so you know they'll draw a lot oh, of adhesive okay. around there sure and then probably an operator will come in and put in that door card are there any speakers in the door no speakers in the no, door okay no. just in the, in the ip in the dash and the subwoofer cut out that you see there. cool cool that yeah. probably keeps repairs 
doesn't work. Well, when you have a door that looks up like this, uh, the weight of the door was a big concern. Oh, so sure. Keep the door as lightweight as possible. The less wiring that has to go out to the door sure. is better. Make sure we have one of the original doors up in our office. Uh, oh, yeah. Go upstairs, you can pick that up and just compare the oh, yeah. difference between the two. It's pretty so noticeable. Cool yeah. Here's the oh, lightest one you'll feel. So that's the, Whoa. that's the liner tray for the <laughs> hood panel. I'll see you. Great All right. to meet you. All right. <laughs> I'm going to shake your hand while Take I'm care. holding the <laughs> What's going to be behind here? Nothing. So wow. this this uh, checkerboard pattern right here is uh -huh. where the solar panel gets bonded on. You gotcha. see this edge, and then there's a rubber edge between the solar panel and the hood. Wow. But you'll see this exposed carbon fiber edge right there, uh -huh. which is really pretty. When you open wow. the hood, you'll see the back side of the solar panel here. There's a way to open the hood? There is a way to open the hood. Okay. There's, a, there's actually a latch to open the hood. Is there a 12 volt to service from the hood? Is that where you'd access No, it? it's in the rear. Oh, interesting. Yeah. In the back. Is, have you decided on a lead acid or a... It's a lithium, lithium. small pack. We can show you. Right oh, sweet. Stuff. That's great. So many companies haven't switched to a lithium 12 volt yet. It drives me Yeah, up. every 30 pounds of weight you add to the Aptera, you lose a percent of range. So yeah. adding 15 pounds for a lead acid battery wasn't something. No, good. and good motivation to lose weight. Good, mo <laughs> good motivation. <laughs> good so this is a cool example of this was done in oh, the mold. So those inserts for the for the hinge is already part of the part when you pull it out. So you don't have to drill a hole. You don't have to tap anything. You don't have to oh. bond anything. You just screw the uh, hinge on and you're done. There'll be some standoffs that go here. So this wasn't okay. fully CNC'd. I see. So when it goes through the CNC machine, there'll be a hole there, a hole there, and a hole for the uh, latch. Oh, okay. But then gotcha. the, uh, the standoffs will just screw through there. Cool. The edge here looks really cool. You can see the, the carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, and I think that'll be a really cool feature that a lot of people, you right. know, uh, Lamborghini and McLaren and Ferrari, you know, you see their uh, forged carbon parts. You're like, oh, they're so beautiful. <laughs> that is your Aptera. Right. On a much more affordable <clears throat> too. And the piece de resistance, the big oh, reveal. Boy. Oh, dun, dun, wow. Dun, dun. <laughs> That's so cool. Man, it's roomy in there. It's everything Holy you want God. and more. <laughs> what a big piece. That's crazy to think from... From back here? From back there all the way to the front, that's oh, one piece. One so this piece. so this cowl is separate. So Holy the tub man. ends here and the cowl actually goes to here. <laughs> so this is kind of a liner part, but show off your strength, go to the tail and lift it up. Oh really? <laughs> lift with your knee. <laughs> Man. So that's the that's the whole Aptera body structure. That's insane. For Stronger roof crack strength than any passenger car on the road. I weigh more than you, so I'm two I'm two ten. You oh. sure? So yeah, wow. this is uh, this is missing some of the structure underneath. But 210 pounds, I'm a big boy. The uh, carbon fiber is really tough underneath there. There's a roll hoop, and then once we put the uh, the steel structure in there, then we'll take a picture with like 12 people on it or something. <laughs> I've heard people express some concerns with steel mixing with the carbon fiber. Does that cause any corrosion? No, it's problems? really the bonding agent. So if you have them touching, then that's bad. It makes metal corrosion. Sure. But if you put a, anything between them, which the bonding agent that we use. Gotcha. Be, that's the middleman. Man. That's the middleman. And it's not new science. I mean, uh, sure. you know, the, the BMW i8 had a lot of mixed. Is this tie into the center console, this like middle structure here that goes down? Yeah, the center console just sets on top of it. Because I was always curious. I know a lot of people have asked you. I think one of the hardly any compromises with the Aptera is two seats and some people are just trying to figure out how do I squeeze in one more? If I could get one more person. Yeah, it would be, it would be back here. We put, like a we put like a toddler seat back here. Yeah, and lower the rear floor. Is there anything legally issued with the uh, auto cycle, three wheel, three seats? Now, if you're a motorcycle, you can kind of have as many people on the motorcycle as you want. <laughs> if you want 10 people That's on it, cool. go ahead. I feel like there used to be a lot more bench seats back in the day, where you just had like the center console in the middle and you fold it up, someone sits there. Is there something Yeah, for that? rigidity, we really wanted the center tunnel, and there's a reason why the center tunnel kicks up high in the back. Oh, okay. There's a cross member that goes across the vehicle back here. Yeah. So the metal for the chassis comes up here, and then there's a big cross member that goes across here. Gotcha. And that gives the vehicle kind of torsional rigidity, and this ties, you know, basically the front to the back. So this one you said is going to be used for a wiring? Yeah, uh, this one's just for the wiring. So gotcha. they, uh, <clears throat> they didn't fully CNC all the holes. Uh, they left out a couple parts because we didn't want to put the uh, the metal in here because they were going to run wires up here. So we wanted it to yeah. be like, accessible. Well, that's going to be cool to have a proof of concept of like maybe just figuring out where <clears throat> everything Yeah, I realized goes. some other cool stuff we, we get to do. This is the first one that we can wrap. So oh, we have one here. True. We can work on the wrap. We true. can uh, give with a local shop and make the dimensions for it and you know, maybe play with some cool yeah cool different wrap features and stuff will but, they be wrapped from the factory in that luna for the accelerator yeah it'll go through the whole assembly process and it'll look like this okay and then at the end of the line down there that's when somebody will come and put on the wrap.
I'm curious how qu quick they can put those on. Uh, we think little... it'll be about an hour and a half. Okay. So okay. two two people, an hour and a half. You want to sit in it? Okay. Gotcha. Can, uh, come sit inside and see. You'll be the first outsider <laughs> to sit in a production of Terra here. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so the battery's under your rump here. And it goes basically oh, okay. all the way to the firewall and all the way to your, mm -hmm. your back here. The back portion of the pack is the PDU, the power distribution management and stuff. So we've got a lot of room. Yeah, so your, your, your pedals will set you back some. So your, oh, butt, okay. your butt will probably be like right on this ridge. And then obviously Look we'll have that. a backrest here. Tons but of legroom. This, uh, this gives you a feel for, <laughs> you know, headroom and stuff. Uh -huh. Obviously your head will be a little two and a half inches higher, but wow. But when you lean back, this is kind of driving position. I'm 6'1", I got, I got tons of room. Have you picked out a CPU supplier for the infotainment? We have, yeah, we're co-developing it with a, a very impressive company that will have a formal release on. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. I know that it's a concern for some when their Tesla has phantom drain throughout the day, and I know there's a big debate about like how much yeah, solar is brought in versus... We're way more concerned about phantom power draw because we have such a small pack sure. for other people. So, Absolutely. You know, if you were, if you were drawing you know 30 40 watts out of the pack mm -hmm. and some phantom draw you know that that's not good in a couple weeks sure <laughs> so with a 40 that, kilowatt that's hour a pack. problem so there's got to be up to four kilowatt hours of just net energy on yeah. top of what the what the car uses if someone uses like the the app and they're checking yeah. on the car that wakes it up so i'm excited to find out who this we, we use is. a totally different way to uh, manage your car remotely so we use an really SM, we use an sms system Oh, so we ping it with SMS, get the data back via SMS. So it's huh. not it's not this live data stream like a lot of the other you know Rivian and Tesla use, which consumes a lot of power, and you got to wake up a pretty powerful computer to so communicate. So it, it's using the old phone, you know, the pager network? network. Yeah, pager yeah. Network. It's basically the pager network. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, but it's uh, super ubiquitous, and it's huh. uh, you know all the uh, like house um, electric meters and gas meters. Yeah. That's the system they use. Interesting. But you can push a good amount of data on it. We can wake okay. up the vehicle. We can turn on the climate control you can track where it's at and you can do all those things it's just a lot less energy consuming and a lot wow. less data consuming do you know roughly how much less it uses Is oh it like substantial like, yes it's like a percentage like you know three four percent of the energy that you would use wow oh that's day. exciting i know some people were curious about 4g versus 5g connectivity yeah. since 3g networks we, we want to steal down. it from your phone so oh there you go we, we <laughs> yeah. want to steal all the streaming stuff from your phone which is True. apple carplay and android auto yeah you've said that there needs to be a chip supplied from apple in order yeah to at, so you have to get in the apple ecosystem and then you have to design out your full infotainment system and they're like mm -hmm. okay here's the chip that makes it all work and they have to approve you before you get that chip so let's send you okay. develop chips you know sending like five or ten development chips okay. after that if you want to get more you got to be like fully certified by apple there's a single <laughs> piece closeout that goes all the way from the a pillar all the way back that drastically simplifies you know the closeouts and the things that are kind of adding weight to the vehicle so usually you'd have an a pillar cover you'd have a roof cover then you have a b pillar cover then you have a lower cover you'd have a, a kick panel cover down there you'd have a rocker panel cover it really adds up all those things add up yeah. we have a side piece a roof cover here that also mm -hmm. covers the A pillar and down the B pillar, and then we have one over there. That's it. So it drastically simplifies the amount of parts we have and reduces, I mean, we're probably maybe a fifth of the weight of, a, of an average small compact car wow. interior. All this is stuff that... is exposed back here, so we don't cover any of the carbon fiber back here. That's and we were just experiencing that where my wife was like, I need to grab my hairbrush from the trunk and yeah. I have to get out of the car to get oh. access to the trunk i was not thinking, in your aptera we could just turn around yeah. and grab it yeah. <laughs> that'd be so much easier how is aptera able to get into the production tooling phase with a, a tiny fraction of the number of employees as a traditional ev startup they usually have hundreds or thousands of people and you guys are able to do it on just a few dozen right or yeah i mean we've used a lot of contractors and mm -hmm. and and companies like Monroe and Associates with Sandy Monroe, they helped us figure out, you know, how to drastically limit the number of parts. Mm -hmm. When you drastically eliminate the number of parts and subsystems, you need less people to design all that stuff. That's good. You know, That's good. The traditional automotive stuff, we get a lot of off-the-shelf components, you know, mm -hmm. the braking components and ABS and all that stuff. The air handler for the uh, HVAC system. It's really the unique parts that we have to own. So the solar, gotcha. the battery pack we own, uh -huh. the, the infotainment, the IO system, all the communication throughout the 
vehicle. We own all that and all the code and the body structure and stuff, which once we found CPC, they were a big, big help. But we've been able to do, we've only got 50 people here now. Wow. We've got another probably 40 or so contractors around the world. A team of less than 100 to launch a vehicle platform like this, I think <laughs> it's quite enough. It's kind of unheard of, isn't yeah. it? It's pretty nuts. Now that the vehicle basically is done on the engineering side for all the hard stuff, yeah. we're really turning into you know a software technology company. That's exciting. So the people we're <laughs> adding now, you know, they're, they're firmware coders, they're software coders, they're working on the UI, UX, and uh -huh. uh, all the things we'll do to upgrade the vehicle over time. And that's so important. That's how you stick the landing. Like you can have really great hardware, but if the software isn't there to catch up with it, that's everything. You know, some recent uh, EV companies have had, you know, real problems with their user yes. interfaces yes. but their vehicles are really complex and they're working with a supply chain that you know every every different supplier owns the code for whatever device so now you're beholden mm. to that company for the code we own all the code for all the communication stem to stern on the vehicle so mm -hmm. we don't we don't have to worry about how our controller interacts with other parts of the vehicles because because we do all that ourselves. So good. So we hope that the limited amount of features that we have and the simplistic nature of our vehicle just makes it a lot easier to provide people with a good user experience. Yeah. It will get better over time. You know, sure. We'll ship the first vehicles to the people in the building and they'll, yeah. have, they'll have validation development vehicles that they'll drive every day. They'll fill out a lot. So are you book. hiring? How do I get on this list? <laughs> <laughs> we will need a lot of people. So if you want, if you want to transition to San Diego, we're, we're open for applications. Let's Chris go. McCammon could use uh, <laughs> help in the content management. You so. need two redheads. <laughs> that may um, go past our redhead quota. <laughs> I was curious. I know that you had mentioned the back solar hatch. That's like the biggest yeah. uh, solar component. By far. Do you have the uh, lamination machine for that big piece? We do. Our, our, our standard lamination that you've seen okay. before, that's big enough to do that panel. That can do it. Okay. We did. It's uh, it's actually not wide enough, but we actually cut the sides off of the rear solar panel. So there's, right. there's glass patches that go on the side. Gotcha. And then the solar runs down the middle. So okay. it wasn't uh, an issue of length. It was a, an issue of width. Interesting. Because the next question I had was basically like, could you streamline the production a lot? faster without the solar or is that not really your limiting factor at this point yeah solar's ahead of everybody else so <laughs> the solar's the easy part and the california energy commission grant is paying for you know the equipment to come so good a lot good. more laminators and other equipment coming for okay you know our, uh, our vehicles to start to get put together gotcha but the first vehicles uh, delivered they can get over the air updates yeah is that yeah. okay because mm -hmm. I know not all startups prioritize that, and then it ended up being a huge technician. Uh, right issue. now, right now the plan is you got to hook up to Wi-Fi, so you got to tether the phone. Sure. Or you got to be at your house, hook up to Wi-Fi, and that's how you get the OTA. Yeah, updates. that's that's fine. You don't want to pay for all that data over cell yeah. networks. Yeah. <laughs> the topic that a lot of people come up to because you've got a lot of fans uh, from Canada are about winter conditions, and oh, we've yeah. taken the liberty of coming up with my own answers a lot of the time. But I'd rather ask you directly, like, what are the biggest concerns or struggles when it comes to like winter testing in the snow and not a lot you know the wheel pants and how they collect and get rid of snow is probably the biggest consideration you know mm -hmm. traction control and all that stuff is easy okay You're basically driving around in the thermos with all this you know compliant right. stuff around i you, figured so. that would help so so, he <laughs> so heating this thing is not a problem okay but uh but how the wheel pants collect snow you know even if you're driving in a half an inch or a quarter inch of snow we're designing with uh guys in europe that are very used to conditions in very cold countries. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they've dealt with these problems before, and we think they have good solutions. But you know, until you actually get on the road and start to test, sure, you know, real world and stuff. We think we've got a really good solution. We think it'll stand up. Yeah, great. And cool. Be just fine. And on that topic of like heating and cooling, I know you have mentioned the belly pan is mm -hmm. being push back until a later date. Does that affect your uh, efficiency targets at all? No, the uh, the the cooling power of a traditional radiator is, it's a little lighter, but it's okay. a little less efficient. So we're taking a weight penalty to have a traditional a radiator, but it's a, it's a little more um, efficient on the belly pan side. So, okay. you know, it's a, it's a give and take. I heard during the Aptera Owners Club interview, shout out to Steve, <laughs> that you guys have a path towards about 6,000 a year being the break-even uh, 6,000 a year is the break-even number. So, we, right. you know, we have the financial model that says, you know, as we start to ramp up, when do we finally, finally right. get break-even? And it's about the 6,000 vehicles a year production. It, is that assuming CPC is still shipping the main bodies from Italy? Or is that assuming like all the uh, battery pack and 
body uh, structure gets manufactured here? Uh, that's assuming the traditional um, get the bodies from Italy. But, oh, okay. Uh, but as we get to 20,000 vehicles a year, we'll start producing bodies here. Right. I figured we'll, that we'll would save a lot. So big difference between cash flow neutral and, and making profit. Sure. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. You know, we, uh, we, we think we'll make, you know, 15 to, to 19 points of, of margin on these vehicles long term. And that's working with our community to come up with the right pricing and everything. Sure. To, okay. to, to make sure that we're a healthy company and yeah. continue to grow solar mobility. And that, that's what it's all about. Just getting as many of these on the road as we can in the next decade. That's so cool. 6,000 a year sounds like insane. We've got a, we've got a spa company down the street. Did I mention one spa? It's a composite <laughs> yeah. spa that has a, a pretty equivalent uh, number of parts in their bill of materials. Oh, and, really? And they ship about 20,000 spas a year. So wow. Uh, out of a, out of a hundred thousand square foot building right down the street, but they're highly, they're highly automated. Um, okay. So you could see, you know, when it, when people talk to me, like, how is it possible in this building? You know, if you build things in sub assemblies and you get most of the supply chain to do the work for you, when you get it here, it's just a couple bolts and, and putting things together. And Man, I have to ask, I know you get asked this every day, but we just want the most recent answer. Is there a timeline on deliveries? We've had some um, incredible progress since the beginning of the year on some funding deals. Good. Um, some debt funding deals and some other equity plays. Okay. Uh, that are working out. They all take time. You got to sure. go through due diligence. You got to, but we, we feel really good about okay. uh, kind of being a T plus nine months Okay. Uh, from when we get uh, one of these deals uh, structured and we think, you know, in the, in the, in the next couple months. So, okay. you know, it's still, uh, it's we're, in, we're in April now. So, you yeah. know, it does put us into 2025. We did change on the website. Yeah. You know, the delivery dates are going to start 2025, but mm -hmm. we still hope, you know, that some of the validation and durability testing vehicles are this year. So people can see, right. you know, real production Aptera vehicles this year. Sure. Uh, whether we still hand somebody the keys to a vehicle this year, I don't, I don't know, maybe 2025. But yeah. We're taking our time and, you know, we, good. We, we're terribly humbled that our community is terribly supportive of doing it the right <laughs> way and not, not I'm all getting in favor caught. of take as long as you can, <clears throat> as long as it happens, you know, just don't rush it and <laughs> run out or anything. It's been great to have the example of other kind of EV startups too, you know, sure. watch some of the, uh, the things that didn't go so well for those companies. Right. And what to we avoid. Be, we can be really weary of, you know, different, um, you know, funding mechanisms and, you know, different ways that they try to push towards production and we're, we're trying to do it different, just like we design the vehicle different and manufacture the vehicle different, and yeah. just a different kind of company. Mounts awesome. here, and this sure. is the air intake for into the vehicle and under the battery. Oh, wow. This is actually the air intake for the HVAC system, so this is where oh. your filter will be. So if you got to change the filter, you can pop the hood and then huh. take the filter out there. How do you pop the hood? Will there be a screen? Yeah, in, inside there's a there's a latch. Oh, a latch. Yeah. Cool. That'll be exciting. So it'll, it'll, it's got a pretty standard automotive latch. Are you planning on including a home charger like a mobile connector oh we are yeah i'd be curious as to why you probably don't want me to ask this but i figured you're, you're the first guys that can like charge via sunlight anyway why the additional expense like why throw it in they're not that expensive really yeah. they're not bad okay in, in in quantity they're not that expensive okay i know tesla's used to like cutting pennies and you know little details yeah, no, here and we could make it an option eventually if we see that you know we deliver our first 200 vehicles and the accelerators are like you know i don't really need this piece of hardware i don't think i would i'd be charging it yeah. on sunlight most of the time <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll definitely ship it with a 110 adapter so you okay. can at least uh, plug into a 110 outlet and yeah. that would be plenty for this yeah. that's that's over 100 and some change more yeah. miles per, per that, night. that's just a little dongle you just uh, plug yeah in. same thing as your phone that's yeah. crazy i noticed this isn't centered is this the center oh uh, it is yeah what is this for? That's the latch for the roof. But because the, the latch is offset, the springs over here, you know, like when you reach in and you flip the little thing. Oh, I see. The latch point is here, but the little flip thing's over here. Okay. Some people have asked about a manual way in like an emergency if someone needed to open the door. Inside wise, I know about that latch. Is yeah. there anything exterior wise if a firefighter was coming up to it or something? Uh, you'd break the window and reach in and do the latch. Okay. Someone had a fairly specific uh, safety question. I'm going to probably butcher it, so I apologize. But someone was asking in the event of a side swipe, if there's like breaking points on the outward mounted wheels so that it doesn't pull the whole with car. Enough, with enough force, almost anything breaks. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say that there's break points that are designed in, mm -hmm. but there is a failure point to the bushings that hold the suspension together. The great thing about this vehicle is we'll do really well in the offset frontal crash test. Yeah. Yeah. Because most of that will just take the wheel. So, the so wheel same, same thing if somebody came like beside you like this. You uh -huh. know, it, it could take the wheel off if it was you know at a at a good enough force, and then you'd have to get a new front suspension 
clip, which would be you know pretty easy to send out. But but the car's just sliding after that. Yeah, you know, that, and that's the optimal scenario. Most accidents are front three quarter accidents, mm -hmm. but you take all of the energy into your quarter panel. Yeah. That's why they have these big shotgun rails in the quarter panels of automotive. Right. Because they have to dissipate all that energy. But if you could get rid of that and just take off a suspension part, yeah, it's a lot cheaper. You don't decelerate the occupants. It's the deceleration that hurts you. Right. That whiplash. So the, the longer you can extend the impact sequence, the better. So to okay. have something that's kind of fungible, yeah, something that you could you know rip off or or bend up is much better for safety. Cool. One point I recall you guys saying this vehicle is more efficient than a bicycle. More efficient than a bicycle at highway speed. Yeah, <laughs> bikes hard to get it. Highway yeah. So speeds, you're, uh, I guess. so your your okay. frontal area of your body pedaling a bicycle. Yeah, is more drag than this whole vehicle. <laughs> That's nuts. Oh my God. <clears throat> we were also in the discord trying to figure out like, you know, a human has to eat food. We can't charge from sunlight. So there's, <laughs> there's an emissions yeah. process in yeah. that as well. Like how many calories you got to burn to get the bike to move. And that's just weird to think about because I know a lot in car culture, like, well, technically you really want to be for the environment. You should ride a bike. I thought it'd be hilarious if you could say, actually, it's, this it's is a tricky technically... situation to think, you know, if you're doing <laughs> the best for the planet, oh, I should get a bike. Cause I, uh, you know, could really lower emissions, but you know, you consume that food. <laughs> and if you went into that food, you right. burned the calories to pedal that bike. Sure. So you could say for fitness and psychological reasons that you should get outside and do that stuff. But yeah. from a pure energy use perspective, you should be in an Aptera. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. You stick two hands out of your vehicle at highway speeds. The pressure you feel against your hands is about the total drag product of the whole vehicle. That's oh. the pressure that Aptera is overcoming. At highway that's speeds. nuts. So if you're on a bicycle, you know, even if you're like super streamlined, right. your legs and your front area, all that front area adds up to way more than the cubic Foot that you know this basically represents. Wow. How it's and does that translate to the faster you go, the more efficient the coefficient of drag helps? Basically, like will you still have a big efficiency loss? Yeah, the if you're ener going the energy use is kind of logarithmic, right? And you know, a big SUV plowing through the air, right? It you know the real reason why supercars can't you know really eclipse 220 miles an hour. It's really hard to. It's yeah. just aerodynamics. Interesting. If they can okay. take the aerodynamic drag down, yeah. they could go faster. All the horsepower, 1200 horsepower you hear about, all that horsepower is just to overcome the immense aerodynamic drag at 200 miles an hour. So when you're cruising, you're out in Arizona, like we were going 85 miles an hour with this. Yeah, I mean, you're only using a couple thousand watts of power. Right. Or I mean, you're looking at your, your energy usage on your vehicle and it's five, six times that, right? This would be still sub 200 watt hours or mile, even at like 85. I don't know if you've simulated that. Uh, oh, that's a good question. As you get faster, it is it is logarithmic, but I right. would say under 200 watt hours a mile at 80 is definitely in that range, close to 150 or something. And does it save a lot of money by capping it at 50 kilowatts as far as the thermals go? Because if it's a 40 kilowatt hour pack, that's not you know, a ton of C's. Yeah, they have a C rating for batteries. So if mm -hmm. you have a 50 kilowatt battery and you mm -hmm. charge it at 50 kilowatts, it's just, um, then it's just one C. Right. Um, you know, battery cells are usually capable of four C charging, mm -hmm. but they produce a lot of heat the faster you charge them. Getting rid of that heat uh, is difficult. It's a more and, expensive BMS yeah. system. Yeah, so 50 kilowatts, we haven't had anybody say like, oh, that's just not enough for me. You yeah. Know, we, we like the idea of being able to charge at the supercharger station and charge at, you know, 150 kilowatts. Okay? Sure. That's the future. So once we get these on the road and we start to really test them and you know, we get comfortable with that, I think upping that. I think that our standard PDU is probably going to be capable of a lot more than 50. Which really? Is good testing. To okay. See. So, so with the standard PDU, we may be able to ratchet it up to maybe like 75. Interesting. <clears throat> that would be pretty B2 big. two of the PDU, maybe, you know, 100 or 150. We just have to get there. Do you think that'd be possibly in time for the 1,000 mile to oh, yeah. high range? Oh, yeah. By if then? You're, if you're, okay. If we're doing cross-country uh, cannonball runs and you, know, you want to be able to charge fast. Just 150 kilowatts, which traditionally is not that much, would translate to 1,500 miles an hour in a vehicle like yeah, that. Yeah, I think the new V4 Tesla chargers do do 300 kilowatts. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's a ton of power. <laughs> that would you be know, nuts I'm, if you could I'm, get up there. I'm glad and humbled that we recognized early on that Tesla was by far the best charging standard. That really paid off. And I think a lot <laughs> a lot of people said, oh, well, it just can't do as much you know, charge as other DC fast chargers. Like, no, it's just because Tesla hasn't opened it up yeah. to do more. Like, <laughs> it can do as much as you want. So. I credit that to you guys. I think you well, kickstarted it. I take credit for naming the NAC standard because the petition <laughs> that we put up, we actually yeah. called it, we want this to be the North American charging standard. Oh. <sighs> 
if all else, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> if everything goes, but yeah, that's amazing. But I do think that will help with the transition immensely. Just having the single. I do too. Port. I do too. I hope that Europe finally wakes up too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be nice because CCS on this vehicle is going to be interesting. The uh, you'd have to have an adapter, so you'd go from the Tesla to a CCS. Mm -hmm. Same thing with GBT. So people that are in Asia and using the, the big right GBT thing that they have. Well, I was going to say you have the best adapter covering the whole thing because <laughs> yeah. you can solar charge anywhere you go. You could ship it anywhere and technically just live off the solar charger. We, we hope that most people get the vast majority of their power just from the solar. I think so. If, if they're able to hit that four kilowatt hours, which I believe you said you guys were testing that out yeah. at the same angles as the car mm -hmm. shape. And you were yeah, getting... when we first conceived of the solar on my roof at my house, I have a mock Aptera with all the panels at the different <laughs> angles cool. and you know, correlated it to the National Renewable Energy Labs data. And you know, that was kind of the impetus of, oh, we could do more than 30 miles a day with just the solar. Yeah. And they really got into it and we're like, oh, sh we could do like 40 miles a day. Like that's wow. like, great. So it was about four kilowatt hours was the, uh, the in, in our tip, the highest in any of the models that we ever had was 47 miles a day. Whoa. But the solar team's like, yeah, you need to ratchet that back. So, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> once that you, you, once you get all higher. the polymers and stuff in there so we wow. the, the solar team's confident with 40 you know we think like in new mexico and you know sure southern california and peak summer you know you could see a little more than that but, but that's the number we're shooting for and okay it all it all then equates to how much energy the actual vehicle uses so for 110 right. watt hours per mile or kilowatt hours a day is going to get you at 36 miles or something like that that's still a lot so we're continually pushing you know it's bearing drag it's brake drag it's the efficiency of your drivetrain the efficiency of your inverter yeah the efficiency of the the power getting in and out of your battery so it's a very holistic approach to, to efficiency. Cool. Is it best to keep the hatch pointed wherever the sun is? Steve's done the most playing with the solar because he was driving around Gamma for a couple months. Yeah. And uh, so <laughs> remember his the tweets. One they got to play around with it the most. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think it's really the direction of the sun. So so getting, you know, the direction of the sun to go over your vehicle fully, mm. that, that gotcha. would seem to be the trick to me. Because I'm but trying to figure versus out. Versus going side to side. Yeah. You really want to soak it up. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to park it in our house. And I'm like, I think this is the right spot. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to gamify the UI so you can yes. see, like, the people in a 100-mile radius of you who's getting the most power per day. Right. And, uh, you know, maybe you could post on a forum from your, oh, that from your drive fun. computer or something, you know, how, how you did it. <laughs> I'd love that. That the, sounds the, cool. The Discord channel will be thick <laughs> yeah. device on how to solve it. It's already there. pretty thick, but it'll, it'll get even more. Did, did you guys add this recently? You're testing out where the... But yeah, the seal's source. already designed, but we haven't paid for the die to actually extrude the seal. Oh, so so gotcha. this seal's from something in Italy that, that came off and they just put okay. it here to, to have the door on. But we cool. designed our own custom seal problem is like in the corners it can't bend so much so like right here there'll be like a molded piece so you got to you got to extrude the, the seal huh. so that profile and then you got to have like over molded parts where it's really aggressive okay uh, but i think that corner right there is the only corner that they have to have like a little over molded piece gotcha and this is the place where the top hinge mounts oh yeah yeah and then the bottom That's hinge it. mounts against against this guy back here gotcha and then the uh the strut runs up to the door from this guy so that, that pushes the door open and close it'll go wow. like this. It'll, it'll exist like in the door right here and that bar is what pushes the door open this is the rear latch cover mm -hmm. so this is a separate uh a glass smc part so if you ever needed to service that you just take those those screws out and then you can actually get to that part so what would possibly be wrong behind this if you were servicing it what well like your what? latch so oh okay it's an electric latch gotcha it's on the body side this latch also mechanically connects to mm -hmm. the little handle if anything you know went wrong with this it needs to be serviced you can actually get to it is that knock knock sensor yeah this is the this is the pocket where the light for the logo goes and mm -hmm. the knock knock sensor so the panel covers from here to here is that simpler or cheaper uh, to have a knock knock than an actual handle that's a good question you know the knock knock sensor is like a couple bucks for okay. the actual sensor yeah. sure the handle would probably cost you know 15 to 20 bucks so yeah it's probably cheaper and lighter because yeah. then you don't have to have the handle mechanically connected you know to anything and something else that won't break then you get to the uh, rear here you uh -huh. know the solar panel comes all the way to this edge just like the uh, just like the front solar the rear hatch closes in here so we've got really good rain management nice. oh this is the, the bunk i didn't even admire the bunk yet oh yeah <laughs> you've got additional you could put a connector down there or a yeah just any kind of little storage you have wow. then uh this ridge is like where the carpet will come up to oh okay so we have a cover that goes over here and the carpet will come up to here and then you have a nice flat surface all the way to the front and what are these in denver really just a stiffening ridge oh stiffening you're back here and you're, you're laying back here doing stuff you know, yeah you know, a, lot of, a lot of things you don't want it to be too and then the subwoofers here right 
The subwoofers in the side there. Yep. Yeah. These are the hold down straps. So oh, okay. you can you can like put a strap over something in the nice. back so you want to hold it down. This up here is where you'd put the dog tent. So you can attach the dog tent. Oh, cool. Then up to the top. Oh, that'll be fun. So your doggy can chill in the back. When you have the rear hatch open, all the rain would go into here. So, oh, so even smart. when you're camping, you still have really good rain management. Does it collect on yeah, there? Yeah, there'll it? be a tube that goes down to the rear wheel pants. Oh, okay. Is you there going to be a hole in there if people want to put ice? Uh, we talked about a hole, but it, uh, I don't think it's something we put in from the factory. So if you really want to put a six pack of beer in there, you could <laughs> drill your own hole. It could drain down into the wheel pant. But. So this is drillable, like with a, just a regular drill? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can, you can, you can see the material here. You know, it's, it's not that thick. You want to lay in the back of the Ontario with you? Sure. <laughs> see what a buddy camping trip is like. <laughs> we had a long day of fishing. <laughs> now we're... We're catching the wow. uh, the rainbow trout. <laughs> now we're looking up at the stars. But you know, the seats folded forward. You have seven feet yeah. to the back back here to the seats. So Could you keep forward. the back closed and lay down, or does it have to be open? It would be pretty coffinish if you kept the back closed. Okay. Maybe if you laid if down. If you that laid way. that way, you could probably do it. So if yeah. it was like if it was torrential weather or something. But really, I had a Honda CRX uh -huh. that I used to take cross country a lot, and I would just sleep in the back of my Honda CRX. <laughs> so when we were redesigning this, I was like, why don't we just why don't we just make like a camping kit for right. that? Because you know you could probably have a lot of good use out of that. Do you know who's <clears> the uh, who's doing your sound system? They were building it into the in vehicle. So the amplifier and the the DSP is built into the in-vehicle computer. Gotcha, okay. And then cool. we're just running kind of off-the-shelf speakers. We didn't sign a deal with Bose or... I gotcha. It's great to envision camping trips. My kids are most excited about the camping features. <laughs> I They're bet. Like, we can't wait to go camping with Daddy and... Mm, you can take <laughs> one kid at a time. Well, my kids are small now, so... Put one in the front seat and two in the back seat. <laughs> These are also uh, SMC examples that we got uh, wow. from CPC a long time ago. And uh, this shows cool. you, you know, how you can bond different carbon fiber and glass pieces together. Mm -hmm. You can even have like metal standoffs for, for pieces uh, like we'll have for the seats wow. uh, and the seat rails. Huh. Uh, but more importantly, this is how we wrap ah, the SMC uh, pieces. And we've had wow. we've had pieces outside testing for over a year now. We did nothing to this part when it came out of the mold. We tried a bunch of different methods where we cleaned it with acetone, yeah. and soap and water, uh -huh. or like a detergent. Nothing seemed to work any better than just putting the vinyl wrap on it right after it came out of the part. Wow, so, that's easy. <laughs> so as soon as it comes out of the part, that's you know, quick. They'll probably wipe the dust off it, have like a cleaning cloth, but then you just yeah. put you just put your uh, put your noir or your soul or your Luna wrap oh, on it wow. or your Hello Kitty wrap. You, can put, <laughs> you, can you know me it. well. That's gonna be gorgeous. <laughs> but I think it's uh, great yeah. that we'll be able to start playing with those wraps and hopefully have a pattern to be able to play with soon. Yeah, and they because, can make because it whatever. We have a vehicle here now. Right, right. And we, uh, we can start playing with that stuff. Oh, that's so cute. You can see some of the the faceting stuff. Like you can screw right into this part. Yeah, yeah. And we showed you the uh, inserts. Right. So you can either have it like this, and when you saw the screws on the roof, uh -huh. they literally screw into the other part like this. There's no rivet or anything in there, it just screws wow. into the part. It's like a self-biting screw. Oh, wow. And that's how you bond it together. So when you bond it together, uh -huh. you put those locating screws in. Really like building like a you know little model car when you're, right. when you're a kid, and some of the pieces like snap together, and some of the pieces you gotta like locate a screw, yeah. fold them together. That, that's essentially what the Avterra is when you build it. Wow. That's smart. Must be feeling a lot more real now, huh? Yeah, it's exciting to uh, see all the hard work from the engineers here and the original vision finally get executed on you know, millions <laughs> and millions of dollars worth of uh, tooling in Italy wow. to deliver this, you know, carbon fibery supercar goodness <laughs> to us here in San Diego. It's crazy to be here and there's still a lot to go, but sure, sure. You know, now we're talking in, in weeks and months, not years. That's it's, leading it up. It's pretty exciting. Well, don't forget us when you're all rich and billionaires. And... No, we will not. <laughs> we, have to, we have to deliver you all of your uh, referral. So oh, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hold you to that. You're going to have a, you're gonna have a <laughs> fleet of Abteras. Hopefully you can start your own race series. Do you think those points will be transferable to future models? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that gives me reason to hold them. That's probably to your guys' advantage. Uh, while you're here, I can week. give you a sneak peek of some of the future models and see. So we're going to wrap it up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone watching. Thanks for supporting directly. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>